All right, so we are a few days from puppy delivery. She is due on Monday, today's Saturday, so we're two days away from her due date. Um, I mean, that could go longer. Last time she went three days after her due date, so we have a little bit of time yet. I'm the type of person that likes to think ahead and be prepared, so I wanna make sure I have all my supplies ready for when she goes into labor. I'm not running around trying to find everything. So I'm just gonna go over a little bit with you today what all I like to have on hand to prepare for labor and delivery um, and the whelping process and also for the days after. So the first thing I'm gonna touch on is the whelping box. So we made this whelping box for her first litter, which is probably about three years ago. This will be her third litter. So her first letter, my husband made this just out of some plywood and two by fours. If you wanna see more on that, you can watch my video on making a whelping box, which is on the playlist with my German short hair puppies. But yeah, so it's just plywood pieces and some two by fours, couple of tomato steaks, stuff he threw together, um, some latches from an old door, that type of stuff, really simple. Uh, we also have this whelping pad. I got that off Amazon, maybe 20 bucks or something. Um, I have two of them so I can wash them, but it does a really good job at soaking up their pee. And then I also got her this new bed just cause they have cots, which work okay, but I wanted her to be extra comfortable. So I got this bed, which once puppies are here, I'm going to put outside the box just so she can have a break from them and be able to have some of her own time outside of the box. So I think that's that. Um, this I set up about two weeks before her due date. I try and do just so she can get comfortable in it and know that that's her comfortable spot to whelp and deliver her puppies. All right, so aside from the whelping box, like I said, about two weeks before puppies, you wanna have that set up. Um, we also have handy dandy heat lamp. Um, once the puppies start to arrive, I like to have that set up, um, you know, plug it in, make sure it's working good beforehand so they're not rushing around trying to find a new bulb. I also suggest getting one with this wire cage around it uh, just for the safety of your dog and for the safety of your home. You don't want any fires. Sometimes heat lamps can be dangerous. So obviously keep an eye on it and make sure it has this cage around it for uh, safety but that will go either clipped onto the whelping box or we'll put some kind of a post there it is you know spring heading towards summertime so it probably won't have to be down as low as some other time so um we'll have to keep an eye on that temperature which i'll go over here in a little bit so we got the heat lamp um some of this stuff is not only for during the whelping but i like to just be prepared for afterward so I'm not running around the stores with three kids and a bunch of puppies and just a bunch of craziness going on. So I like to have things that I'm going to need a couple days after. Um, I like to buy blankets. Well, one blanket. Um, so this blanket is for advertising pictures uh, for our Facebook page. For uh, We like to advertise on Lancaster puppies specifically and a couple other sites. So this is just kind of a cute blanket that'll look nice for puppy pictures. And it's also my secret way of getting another cute blanket for the house because I feel like you can never have too many blankets, right? So this is like a rust orange knitted blanket that I will use for advertising pictures, which I just feel like you need to, you know, go a little extra on the advertising pictures. Um, I feel like how you go about advertising just really helps get your puppies sold um, so the next thing I'm going to touch on, a wash basket. Um, that is for when Scarlett is in the middle of labor and she's pushing out puppies. I like to keep the puppies separate during that time so they're not in the way and not getting squished. And so that, you know, you don't have to wonder what they're doing, make sure they're okay. Just have them all snuggled in here. Um, I have a towel that I'm going to put in there and then the heat lamp will go over top of that. And then after she pushes the puppy out, you know, I'll put them back on the nurse for the in-between time and then stick them back in once she's pushed another puppy out. So 
I have a wash basket and a towel for them to lay on. Uh, I also have a second towel just because sometimes labor can get a little messy. So I will lay that down on top of the whelping pad just so it's easier cleanup. Uh, I might get another towel or two, you know, just in case so I can try and keep the area as clean as possible. All right, now I have my handy nanny box we're gonna go through here. All right, so here's my thermometer. Any type of thermometer will work. Um, this is just so I know how warm the puppies are under the heat lamp. I don't want it to be too hot. And I don't want it to be too cold. I just want it to be the right temperature. So I have this as my guide so I can keep tabs on that. I also make sure I have my leash. Our dogs don't go on leashes very often, but this is one time that they do. Um, so this is to take her out in between puppies if she needs to go to the bathroom or sometimes it helps if they walk around to keep labor moving. So I'm gonna keep her leashed because sometimes you take them out and she starts pushing a puppy out or she wants to wander around and you don't wanna keep them out there too long. So I just have a leash so I can keep her contained where I want her to be. I also have this ball syringe thingy from when I had my babies in the hospital, <laughs> but you can buy them anywhere, Target, Amazon, whatever. Uh, this is to suck out any am amniotic fluid that might still be in their nose or mouth. Um, you know, if they're having trouble breathing, you might have to suck that out. So I just keep that on hand. Usually, I don't really think I have to use that, but it's a good thing to have. Let's see. String, any kind of string. You could use thread. You could probably use floss. This is a little, I don't know what it is twine I guess so I have twine that's just what I had on hand I wasn't going to go buy string specifically but that will be for if uh, Scarlet doesn't chew off the umbilical cords I will tie that around and snip the umbilical cord myself which I've never actually had done do that yet she's very good at doing it herself but like I said I still have it on hand for just in case um, another thing I need to put in my box is scissors. That's on my list. I just need to find it. <laughs> so yeah, you'll want some string and a pair of scissors. All right, so this is more for beforehand, but I have a thermometer that is not used for us. It's specifically an animal thermometer. We only use for our dogs pretty much. Um, it's actually new. I think I got it at the hospital hospitals are handy when you have babies you get to take all the stuff home and use it again for other things so this is to take her temperature before she would be going into labor like I just did it tonight because I wanted to have an idea um they say that within 24 hours of them going to labor their temperature will drop under 100 and hers tonight was over 100 so we're safe for another 24 hours uh, I'll take it again tomorrow just to make sure but it's kind of a cool thing to have just so you can have a little bit of a heads up. All right, and I also have these puppy collars. These ones are Velcro. Um, you can trim them to size. So these are really good for when they're first born. Uh, you can make them super small and it helps you identify them a lot easier uh, by colors. And then I also have these breakaway collars that I like to use when they're a little bit older. Um, oops. They just look a lot nicer and they hold up a lot better. And it seems like the Velcro ones, when the puppies start playing, they seem to tear off easier. These can still tear off just because they are breakaway collars, but they just hold up better and they just they just look a lot nicer. Um, and they're not that expensive either. I got those on Amazon as well. These are actually left over from the last layer because I didn't know how many puppies we were going to have. And honestly, I might have to get more. This might not be enough. Um, on her x-ray, which... If you want to know more about x-rays, I do have a video on that. Um, but yeah, we got an x-ray and there's at least 10 puppies, possibly more. So might need more calls. All right. Another thing I have is this handy dandy scale. Um, we got this a while ago, I think to like weigh chickens or something when we were packaging them up like frozen um, to sell. <laughs> but I use this to weigh the puppies. I'll get a little uh, like a pink tub to put on that and also a blanket to put in it and then I'll tear that weight and then I will see how much the puppy weighs. Um, I do that about every day while they're small just to make sure they're gaining weight. Um, if any aren't gaining weight, I would have to feed them another way through a tube or a syringe. Um, so I, last time they all gained weight very well. I didn't have to do that, but like I said, it's good to have on hand. 
and a feeding syringe is on my list that I still need to get. So, um, it's just, you know, you can express the mother's milk, put it on a spoon, uh, suck it up with the syringe and just hand feed the puppy if it's behind on gaining weight, just to make sure it doesn't get too behind. Um, you don't want to have a sick puppy that doesn't make it because it wasn't getting enough food. And it's especially could be a problem if there's lots of puppies and they're not producing enough milk, but Scarlet always does very well with feeding the puppies and producing plenty of milk. Uh, so hopefully we won't need that. All right, these last couple things, actually, I did want to touch on, let me see here. I have two other things on my list here that I need to get. Um, actually, yeah, so I want to get a tub of ice cream, vanilla ice cream. Um, it's a good thing to have on hand just for a snack um, for them while they're laboring. Uh, it also helps provide energy and calcium to give them energy to labor and to push out puppies and help them along. Uh, so that's always good to have. Give them a spoonful of that every hour or so. And I also need to print out a weight chart so that I can keep track of the puppy's weight. Um, so yeah, I need to do that on the computer at some point here. All right, but yeah, the rest of this stuff is more for a couple days after, probably one, two, three days afterward when we need to do the puppy's tails and do claws. So I have a surgical scissors here. That'll be for docking the puppy's tails. Um, it's breed standard. So we got to do that when they're very young, a couple days old. And then I also have two clamping shears here. Uh, I think we like to use the smaller one. And this is for the dew claws. So these couple things, if you guys don't have a breed standard for that, you don't need those things, but oh, now I'm stuck. Um, yeah, German short hairs are very energetic, fast moving hunting dogs. And those things are done for their safety just so they don't injure themselves um, while they're running around in the woods and through the fields. So we got that, uh, long to go with that. <clears throat> we also have a wound care spray. I just like to spray that on their tails and dew claws just to make sure they're healing up okay. We've never had any problems with infections, but I like to be proactive. Um, we also have some iodine, it's probably pretty much the same thing. Um, and then we have this first aid antibiotic powder, which I like to put on. Um, a lot of times they don't bleed very much, but if there is a little bit of blood, I like to dab a little bit of this on just to help stop the bleeding. It's a very quick and not a very painful process for them. I mean, I'm sure it hurts a little bit, but they whine for like two seconds and then they're over it. Um, I know it sounds a little harsh to some of you guys, but honestly, it's not that bad. I also have wormer for Scarlet. Um, every time I worm the puppies, which is about every two weeks, I'm going to worm Scarlet because puppies can be wormy. And so I like to stay ahead of that for Scarlet as well. And this here is the puppy wormer, Chewy. It's good for dogs up to 120 pounds. So obviously they don't get very much of that, uh, but I need to get a syringe for this too. So probably just, you know, get one or two syringes for if I need to hand feed any of them and for the warmer. All right, so I know I went over that kind of quick. Um, that's pretty much my kit that I have all in a basket, just so it's all on hand. I <sighs> can't think of anything else, but I think I'm ready. I hope so. If not, husband to the store it is. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys. I hope that helped for all you first-time breeders. Um, and try not to stress out too much about it. Google's always your friend too, and YouTube, of course. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have lots of informative videos about breeding and laboring dogs and having puppies. And we should have a couple videos posted in the next couple of days when the puppies arrive. So have a great weekend. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button.